Welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday, brought to you by Idaho Public Television and Montana PBS. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday with um, Montana PBS and Idaho Public Television. I'm Carrie Wardle from Idaho Public Television. I'm the education manager there. And uh, we have some special guests today that we're really excited about. And, and also my colleague Nikki is on this uh, chat with us. So I'll let them introduce their, themselves and then they're going to talk to us about um, the startup teacher and I don't know, lots of good stuff. I'm really excited to hear from them. So Nikki, take it away. Hi everybody, I'm Nikki Vredenberg. I'm in Bozeman, Montana. I work for Montana PBS and we are super excited to always partner with Idaho Public Television once a month to bring you Tech Talk Tuesday, um, just a, a informal virtual discussion about all things tech and teaching. And we have some awesome rock star educators here today and it's like old friends reuniting for most of us. So. Um, I'd love to introduce you to Darcy and Michelle. So why don't you, Michelle, why don't you start? Hi, uh, sure. So um, my name's Michelle. I'm in Virginia right now and actually headed off to Switzerland uh, within the next month. Um, I am a former teacher and I am someone who got a little bit fed up with PD that didn't let me uh, innovate and do stuff for my students. Um, so it's taking me on an interesting journey. I started something called the Educators Lab where I um, worked with organizations to, to rethink and redesign professional development and that led me to meet these great ladies and uh, ended up writing uh, the Startup Teacher Playbook with Darcy and I'll let her go. I'm Darcy Bakigard. I was a high school English and theater teacher for 10 years and then worked at Prairie Public Broadcasting in Fargo, North Dakota as their professional development and technology integration coach. So this is a delight to be back with the PBS crew. And I have joined Michelle, as she said, a lot of similar stories, I think, for all of us on here that professional development just always felt like it fell flat. And Michelle and I wrote the Startup Teacher Playbook a year ago. I, had, I was in the hospital editing when I was, before I had my babies. And uh, that feels like eons ago. And it was only a year ago. But we envisioned what we hope professional learning can be and professional development should be. And part of that is thinking through how do we really capture this entrepreneurial mindset right now more than ever with everything that's going on with COVID and hybrid learning and distance learning. And so hopefully we can share some ideas in this short chat to help you take control of your professional learning now and going forward into the future. So I, Michelle says this a lot and I just love it of this idea of how can we turn problems in quotation marks into possibilities um, with entrepreneurial thinking because problems really present the opportunity to innovate. And I kind of get sick of the word innovate in education. It feels like it's thrown around a ton and doesn't really have any meaning. Um, but if there was ever a time to innovate I think it's 2020, like after this whole school year. Um, I hesitate to use the word dumpster fire, but that kind of feels like where we were at this year. So let's just let 2020 be a cleansing fire and get rid of the things that weren't serving us as professionals and weren't, more importantly to me, weren't serving students in their education. I don't know if anyone else wants to jump in there on why this is important right now. You know, I was just in a meeting recently um, where I talked about how, you know, as awful as, as COVID is, I hope that one of the good things that comes, comes from it is that we realize the things that were not working in education, that were not working in traditional classrooms. And we've adjusted those. And I hope that like your little second bullet there says, I hope that when this, when, life returns to some sense of normalcy that we don't go back to those things. I think teachers are discovering 
new and innovative ways to reach kids in ways that they didn't before. And I hope that those are things that continue on in classrooms, um, you know, beyond, beyond COVID happening. I wanted to give a little bit of a backstory, like, you know, why do we talk about entrepreneurial thinking? Because usually they're not associated with teaching and uh, professional development. And, you know, as teachers, uh, or when I was teaching, you know, I noticed the world's changing fast and you need to adapt and evolve. And usually teachers are not allowed to adapt and evolve. Like, and, and I don't think, you know, cause in, we still kind of have this one size fits all world in education. And the thing is, is, you know, what works for your period one might not work for period five. Um, and teachers know that, and we need a space where we can adapt and create learning experiences that really meet the needs of our kids. And that's where we, we you know, we, we all fall into this need, like, okay, we have this great, we have this time allotted for development and learning, you know, why aren't we using that to really uh, just uh, let teachers collaborate and work together to solve the problems because they're seeing it, they're working with the kids. And then now with COVID, I think a lot of people are actually understanding what we were talking about years ago, where it's like, guys, we're seeing the problem. Our students are telling us what they need and what it's like in their homes and what, what would make learning best. Um, and and we can do it. And this is where the entrepreneurial thinking comes in because it's really just providing tools and a process for teachers to you know, approach a problem and turn it into um, an opportunity that works best for them and for their students. Yeah, this is, so all of that, because 2020 has opened the door to all of that, we're gonna help you tap into that entrepreneurial thinking and really turn these opportunities um, for some real innovation. Because I'm with Carrie. I hope we don't just go back and fall back into the way things were. Um, let's use this op opportunity because if we don't do it now, when are we going to do it? Like this has kind of been a giant reset button. Um, there's so much opportunity to just start with a clean slate going back to school. If you haven't already, um, schools in Fargo around North Dakota are kind of shifting back to full-time in-person here at the start of the new semester and after Christmas. But if we don't do this now, when are we going to do it? And I know it sounds a little bit cheesy, but if you as the teacher don't do it, who is? Of We can't wait for top-down mandates to come at us and tell us how we're going to fix things in education. Like Michelle said, you know what's going on in your classroom and what your students need. And sometimes the kids you see in the morning are different than the kids you see in the afternoon. And you need the freedom to just do that, to be allowed to do those things. So I, this hopefully is something that I'm um, I'm assuming that this slide deck is going to be in the video description, you know, there's a link to it. So feel free to come back to this. The goal here is just to have you really think about what 2020 has looked like. And I think that that could be somewhat stressful and a little scary to think about everything that you as a teacher have already endured because, oh my God, there are a lot of people doing hybrid learning and it's like having to do two complete, I mean, I can't even, it's just absolute insanity. But through that process, do take time to reflect on 2020 and the successes that happened and the opportunities that are presenting themselves. Any feedback here, ladies, on what you would encourage people to do as they're thinking through um, how you approach going back and thinking? Because part of, to me, part of the entrepreneurial mindset is being able to recognize the opportunity to innovate and being able to recognize that this is an like a chance for me to do something new or to expand and to grow and to try something else. Yeah, I just love that you put um, in the successes, the parent parent guardian piece. So many schools that I worked with um, this summer saw, first of all, this challenge of we, we realized how holes, all the holes in our parent communication, we realized we didn't have uniform systems in place for, for communicating with parents. Um, we realized we weren't as a building, we didn't present a, a a structured and easy to follow plan for how we would be communicating. Um, and, you know, this really pushed that uh, schools coming together and figuring out 
how how do we communicate with parents what tools strategies what do, what messaging are we going to use and those parents that maybe wouldn't have come on board using digital communication saw that there, you know there really was no other option and so now i think access be, communication between parents and teachers um, i think is really improved since all of this started and that's one of those things that i hope doesn't change uh, because we know that when kids when their parents are, are talking with teachers we know that just increases the experience for the kids I just want to add too like when when teachers are reflecting and they look over this list like i think everyone did the best job they could with mm -hmm. what they were given i mean everyone worked super hard and i think the biggest thing as you're reflecting is the things people were complaining about the most um those tend to be your biggest biggest like best um, bits of feedback on what really wasn't working, right? And I think the one thing that um, is always good to do is don't take anything personally, right? Like you did your best. So a lot of the frustrations and venting and things you were hearing was just people probably not in the most effective way trying to communicate to you what was going on for them, what their pain points were. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I think too, when you're reflecting, if you can take that step back and realize like you did the best you could, but take those tidbits, don't, they weren't personal. Um, they, you know, just take those, those, those little tidbits that people were telling you as, as opportunities and, and really try to look at those things as like, okay, that this was their way of telling me what really wasn't working. And this is what, you know, we need to try to improve on if I can, um, because you might not as well, because really, you know, some things aren't in our control, but um, I just want to throw that out there as well, because I, I think sometimes we uh, avoid um, some of our harshest criticisms or a lot of, it, it gets overwhelming, I think, with everything that's been going on for everybody to kind of internalize it. And I really feel like teachers have been the, um, beast of burden on this for a lot of people. So, so I just want to throw that out there because I, I, I also think it's, it's also this kind of game of like, okay, I've been told a lot of stuff. What's in my control? How do I not take this personally? Because it feels personal. And then how do, can I move forward? I love that one. What's in my control? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so look around you, you know, think of what made you smile, what made kids smile, what just, what stories have you heard? And if you haven't heard stories from other teachers, from, from students, from parents, consider taking a little bit of time to ask if you haven't heard for any reason um, to gather some stories, particularly of those successes. I think it's easy. I feel like all we hear about, particularly in the media and you know, in society in general is, oh, students are falling behind and all of this. And there, there's been some research that has come out recently showing that students are still making gains in ac across the board. Um, and there's some opportunity for improvement there. But in general, teachers have really stepped up and done an amazing job. And so if you haven't heard, if all you have heard are those pain points, do also take a moment to seek out some of those positive stories where things have been really awesome. So think back on those moments of things that you loved and favorite lessons and things that you were able to bring, but also try to cultivate a, a, a collaborative spirit in with your colleagues to seek out and find more of those stories of what has really worked for other people too. And then we're gonna go through a few tools to support you. Most of these are pretty low tech. And so in terms of tech, really, a, a printer. Um, Michelle is going to highlight a pretty awesome tech tool um, that you can use. But a lot of these are some pretty simple, like including this graphic organizer that's available at the educatorslab.com. Um, make sure that that's right, Michelle. Um, but just this simple start, stop, continue activity. I've done this with students as we reflect on a semester or on a unit. Um, I've done it with my drama students, with my speech teams of what were some things that you want to start, some things that you've heard about. What are things that just weren't effective, didn't quite work, and what are things that were really awesome and you want to continue? And so this is just a cute graphic organizer that you can use for yourself. Um, and it's available to download at our website. And um, you can use this with yourself, with your students, with colleagues, with whomever. 
I also want to add too, I think um, a lot of this applies to your tech use um, mm -hmm. because, you know, we get told we have to use certain tools or, you know, you need to do this or you have, you're stuck in full virtual mode right now or you're doing hybrid. And sometimes you just need time to just play around with it and see what works best and how you're going to incorporate and, you know, what works, what doesn't. And so um, a lot of these tools are just great for helping you to kind of you know, kind of strategize like, okay, what am I going to use? Like, okay, let's say I've tried these tools, what worked, what didn't, maybe how do I use it in a different way? Maybe I just get rid of using that. Okay, I'm stuck with this program. How does it apply? Um, so when we go through some of these tools, um, we, we've seen them used for that just to help um, teachers kind of just think through uh, what works best when they're applying new tech to with with their teaching. All right, and this is the Educator Canvas. So Michelle, why don't you share a little bit of how this device, and I will call it a device in this context, came to be. Sure, um, so I have this interesting background where I got to kind of get mixed in with the, uh, the startup world. And when I say startup world, um, specifically social entrepreneurship. Um, so if you're not familiar with social entrepreneurship, it's really just using business for good. So impact is valued over making a profit. But the beauty of um, social entrepreneurship is if you're able to sustain a social business, you don't need to go asking for money, you can sustain yourself. So you have more time to focus on, on creating an impact. Um, the reason I start with this is it was kind of interesting. I had been living in Madrid and I was going to a business school over there where I got introduced to this and then I moved to Switzerland and back to DC and I kind of saw this the the rise of like this, this startup culture and especially with social entrepreneurship it was just fascinating because they'd run these these startup weekends and these business they had this business model canvas and you could go to this workshop and literally anybody it did not matter your background could say hey I noticed this problem and it could be in any industry so health energy whatever I think I have a solution and that was their goal that was their driver so with this 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 business model canvas it was literally a one pager like this and people could go and just kind of strategize like how does this idea have value um can i make it work and it was enough to get them going so they go from box to box to see if they could actually put a venture together or get that idea off the ground and um I thought that was amazing. I'm like, why don't we do the same kind of thing in professional learning? Like they, everyone comes in like, my class is wild. What do I do? Or like, I, these parents, I, I don't, I don't even know. Like, how do I, how do I move forward on this one? Um, you know, or check like the kids know the computer better than I do. I'm supposed to be teaching them stuff, but they're showing me like how to, and, um, and so that's what teachers usually come to you with, right? Or, or these kind of things where it's specific specific to the needs of their class and their kids. And so it's like, well, why aren't we using that time to work together and to talk about the problems we're having and to solve them? And so we just kind of stole this, this concept um, of, okay, like, let's do a, an incubator, you know, and, and mm -hmm. we stole the idea behind this tool where it's like, what are the need to know things you need to think through to see um, if an idea could work, right? Because we also talk a lot about um, taking risks in education. Like we say teachers should take risks, but it doesn't seem what we, like we mean it <laughs> um, because we want them to be able to prove everything before they try it. Um, this would give teachers a chance to like kind of work through an idea and to just try and to see if it could work for their students. And I love that this is something that can be used for macro problems and micro problems. So another former colleague, um, Mecca, who uh, teaches is a technology coordinator in Iowa. She used this and the overarching problem that all of the staff was, had was how are we going to engage in a hybrid learning model? And then each team of teachers, each individual teacher or working in teams broke that down further. And so there was this one big overarching problem for the whole district that needed short-term girls, inspiration, user input, that needed all of these things. But then each sub goal under that 
also this works for that. So it can be something simple like, you know, lining up to go to recess or to go outside is just a, a disaster and it's crazy. And I need a solution to that. Um, my district has mandated, you guys all mentioned this, my district has mandated that I use X tech tool to communicate with parents. How am I going to best incorporate that into my practices? And how am I going to make sure that it is working for parents and guardians so that it ultimately is actually helping students because that's everybody's goal. So whether it's a personal goal that you want to work on, an opportunity, something that just isn't functioning as smoothly as you would like, if it's an idea that you have, um, or if it's like a cool new tech tool that you have heard about through these tech talks, like, oh my gosh, they were talking about this on Tech Talk Tuesday. I encourage you, instead of just going, I'm going to use this new tool to take one step backwards and say, I think this tool could really help me address this specific need that my students have. And if you start by looking at what is the need, the challenge, the obstacle, however you want to frame that, then how you choose to roll out that tech tool, how you choose to integrate it into your practice is going to shift and be much more targeted and much more specific and more than likely more successful because you've integrated that tech tool with a specific purpose and goal in mind. And now you're also able to get some of that data that Michelle alluded to that people are always wanting that verification of, is it helping you address the problem you were hoping it would help you address? Um, rather than just saying, oh, like I learned about Flipgrid and it just sounds awesome. So I'm just gonna use it. Um, what challenge do you think Flipgrid could help you overcome or reduce with your students? And then this one pager just helps you launch that idea. I also want to add too, I think, um, uh, you know, for people that are facilitating PD or for administration who wants their, their staff to work on an issue specifically. So, you know, how do we have, how do we do hybrid learning? Um, this is a way to give a, a tad bit of structure, but really let teachers just personalize their solutions. Um, I mean, teachers are incredibly competent and, and amazing individuals. And I've been really a little bit disheartened by how many educators I've heard feel like they're kind of getting micromanaged and forced to do yet again, one more thing. And I think with part of this, okay, let's not go back to what we were doing. Why don't we see what happens? Like, why, why aren't we letting teachers, uh, go for it. Like, why, why do, are we not trusting them to use professional learning to, to find solutions to pain points? Um, so I think that's another reason um, we kind of wanted to create this and put it out there because there's really no reason that professional learning shouldn't be collaboration time or time to address the pain points we already have instead of just adding more and creating new stresses. Um, you know, we could just take a, a step back and pause and, and, and give that time to address what's happening. And it's a simple document that I've had good feedback in doing a few workshops now a year and a half ago. Um, we used this tool after a traditional sit and get day of professional learning where people went and listened to different breakout groups. They came back for a second day. We brainstormed, we just did a little refresher of the different ideas they gathered. And then everyone identified a challenge, something that was bothering them, something that wasn't quite working or something that was just really you know, exciting to them. And they had a day to actually plan and design how they were going to implement that inspiration. So a traditional sit and get workshop became an innovation lab, literally, and teachers were able to design using this tool solutions and they were able to then actually implement. So think of how many times do we go to professional development and in the worst case, sit there and go, this had nothing to do with anything. Um, but even best case, get super excited about something, but then have to go back to the classroom. And so when do you actually have time to figure out how you're going to do what you were just inspired about doing? So this can be a way for facilitators to bake that into a day. And I got um, more than I got a couple emails from teachers who were in that workshop who said they were so grateful that they had had that opportunity and this structure because when COVID did hit, they felt like they had a strategy that they could use 
And they reached out to me and said, I am so glad that I have this tool and that I had this training because now I feel like as we're approaching this whole new way of teaching and learning, I have some tools that I can use to actually like approach this um, and break it down a little bit. So I, I took that as they were feeling a little less totally overwhelmed because they had one tool, it was totally new. This whole situation was totally new, but they had a familiar tool that could ground them back to, I can control this and I can use this to try to make sense of that which I cannot control. And I think 2020, <laughs> that might be the model for 2020, that which I cannot control <laughs> and what we had to do with all of that. Uh, another tool. Wait, I, I think we should go through the boxes now. Oh, I disappeared again. Um, should we not do a little run through through the boxes of what this is? I think I can do it pretty quick. Okay, so when we've given workshops with teachers, this is what we notice. Usually you need to kind of think through and write down to be successful. Um, so the first thing is just writing it down. We don't know what it is, but writing it down tends to make people do it. And that's part of why this is here. So it doesn't need to be complete sentences, but you know, just things to think about, little bullets. So the first thing is, um, so you have your problem and we usually suggest that people put their problem as a question because asking it as a question lends itself to an opportunity, right? So how might I, you know, increase engagement? How might I better connect with my parents? Whatever. Um, then you have your solution. So uh, you kind of address your user and what you think your impact will be. You can give your project a name. So in the first category, we have impact. And here's where you're really thinking about your goals. So um, what does success look like? So if you're gonna do it, um, what, what, what does that mean to you? So maybe you have some big goals, like, you know, my kids are just gonna master something, it's gonna be great. Or maybe it's like, my kids are gonna be more engaged. And when we ask you, how would you measure that? And it doesn't need to be like strong data. It could be, I see more smiles. I see more hands up. Um, I see more kids participating and even coming to class. So just, just those little things. Um, then we have your long-term vision. And this is where we kind of challenge you to say, is this a piece to a bigger puzzle? Um, so maybe you wanna try and test out something small, but it's part of a bigger vision. Or this could also be for long-term vision, does, is this part of your educational philosophy? Is this something that makes you the teacher you wanna be? Um, and we ask you to kind of suggest like, are you in, so basically are you investing your time in a project that you know is what you believe in as an educator? Um, then we have insights. This is where we kind of ask you to, um, look at your user and just kind of gather some information so that you can be more successful in implementing your project. Um, we really wanna emphasize that this section is on implementation um, because you've already probably with your solution, um, usually you in brainstorming, you do you know your design thinking and you think about your user. Um, but we, so we mentioned implementation because you know when you've gone to a staff meeting and then they ask you how you wanna do it and then they don't listen to you at all and just do it anyways how they wanted to do it. Um, we don't want to do that to our students because that happens a lot where we're like, yeah, guys, what do you want? And then um, the implementation ends up kind of where we fall apart. So when we say inspiration, don't reinvent the wheel. Like you're going to personalize your project because you're adapting it to fit the needs of your classroom and your students. So there are so many resources in education. Please use them. If somebody already made a journal, take it. They, and people love, I mean, you love when people take your work. What a great idea. I mean, it's the best compliment you can give to a teacher. Um, and then also with inspiration, what's on Twitter? What are on the blogs? Like we love Paul to Pedagogy, Edutopia. You guys constantly giving great resources, take them. That's inspiration. Um, user input. This is really trying to ask your student, how should we do it? Okay, so we already know we wanna use maybe this tech tool to boost engagement. It works perfectly with this unit. Okay, well, what does that look like? Like ask the kids, like, do I need to make sure that you guys have it self-paced, you know, so that way you have time to get to it. And that's that's really the feedback you're looking there and user input. Just get your student, that's your student voice and choice um, to, to the best of your abilities. In the logistics section, this is just thinking about, you know, really the, the tangible things you need to do to just get it done. So what are your tasks? And we strongly recommend writing down like a quick to-do list especially if you're in a team, because um, we've done this where you host a meeting and people are like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell the parents. And everyone's like, yeah, we'll just tell the parents. And then when you ask them, what does that look like? One person's like, I'm going to send a PowerPoint. The other's like, I'm going to call them. And then the other point's like, yeah, I was going to just put it on a, um, 
on the newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or one, I forgot what that one app's called anyways, but, um, that's why we asked you to write down your tasks, make sure you're on the same page and everyone knows who's doing what, um, and that way it's more likely to get done. Um, really thinking through resources. So space tools, um, funding that money tends to be a barrier expertise. Like who do you know? And we want you to think about this because sometimes we forget who's in the building. We forget that the parents can help. We forget that our kids have amazing skills. Like anytime anyone needs social media, like we wanted help. I asked my neighbor, she's 17. She's way better than, than I am. Right. So, I mean, they, 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 they have it. Um, another thing I was, I was on donors choose and this woman, when I remember was asking for a class rug and it was like $90 and she suggested this one on Amazon. And I'm like, why does she not go in Facebook marketplace? She can probably get a rug for five bucks that it's about the same. Like, why does it have to be the brand new? So sometimes for resources, we ask you to also get resourceful um, with, with how you can, can complete your project. Um, partners is another biggie. So, and again, there's some overlap between the boxes, but um, who can help you with this project? So who are the people you can reach out to? You know, is it, it, the librarian, it, could she be your new best friend? Is this the space you've been looking for? How do you create that partnership? Are there Girl Scouts in the building who are working on something? Um, so really thinking about how you can engage other people to help you complete your work. Um, and also out of the building as well. Like who are the people in the community that can help you? There's this one video that I always love showing and it's of, um, there's this, uh, I guess it's a Brazilian, it's students from Brazil, and they actually partnered with the retirement home in the US. So you have these, you know, 80 year olds doing these English language lessons. And it's wonderful, like they just build this bond with these kids, and they're just kind of happy to do it. And you know, they, the kids are learning English and, and, and these people in the retirement home are like, this is fun. And so it's just this interesting partnership that you might not have normally think of, but we have so many great people in our communities um, that you know, we should look to for some of these opportunities we wanna to bring to our students. Um, finally is the execution portion. And this is sure making sure you actually implement and do it. Um, so biggest thing goes with tasks, give yourself a, a, a due date, right? But realistically, one thing I see people do, or we both um, see people do where they fail is people tend to not give themselves adequate time to complete tasks. You are not with COVID, with no childcare, going to like revamp your entire school year in two weeks. Like you're not, don't do it to yourself. You'll lose sleep. Like just, so just putting proper due dates on when you think you'll get things done. Um, strategy. We all know we're going to have a roadblock and sometimes it could be a person. What's, what are you going to do if your plan A doesn't work and already think through some of those things. Um, and finally, the last one is really managing relationships. New ideas um, tend to lead to stress, whether it's for students or parents. How are you already going to hit it? Who do you need to engage? How can you communicate new ideas to people so that you don't deal with the backlash? Just prepare people um, because really it's not that you're doing something brand new. It's just a change. You know, it's just the next step in a, in a process. So how do you help make it more digestible to other people? And that is our way of kind of looking at problems. And those tend to be the biggies that, you know, you need to think about. Out. And it doesn't need to be this complicated either. Like you look at this and this is something that usually if you already have an idea and a solution, you can go through this actually pretty quickly. Um, but yes, that is the canvas in a nutshell. I think, I don't know how long I just talked. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully if you do use this a few times, there's nothing groundbreaking. I mean, there's nothing earth shattering about this but there isn't a tool like this currently for teachers that just it's all in one place it asks you to do this you can also download and print this from the educatorslab.com for free so you can go there click and download print the copies that you would want um, do it on a separate piece of paper whatever works for you um, but hopefully by going through this process a few times, it also just kind of becomes second nature. It's one of those building the habit of self-reflection and kind of going through these things. And like Michelle said, it doesn't have to take a long time to think through each one of these boxes. You don't need to go, there's no order to this. You can go wherever you want, um, but it's asking you to think through those big things that would actually help you make sure that what you're wanting to do gets done. 
So I just will really quick add, I love this for a lot of things, but I, as you guys were talking, I was just thinking back to my, you know, years in the classroom as well. And, and thinking how amazing it would have been to have something like this for those top down mandates that come that like, you have to do it. So mm -hmm. we got to figure out a way to do it. And sometimes what ends up happening is either you're mad and you hate it because there's all these obstacles and it doesn't actually work for you. And then you're just ticked off because you have to do it or you don't do it even though you were supposed to, um, right? Like there's all these things that happen when it comes from the top down. And I was just thinking, gosh, this would have been, I was thinking of specific things in my mind that were top down mandates that came down to us that I was like, you know, and um, didn't really want to do and didn't go so well for me, but they didn't go really well for me because I, I didn't want to do them. And I just thought if teachers could take this when they get that kind of top down mandate from their admin that you know they're going to get because that's just the reality, right? Yep. And work through this to figure out all of those, um, you know, goals and problems and resources. I think that it would just could just make that be so much more successful. I appreciate that honesty <laughs> because I think in education we've all been there and also how many times have you as a teacher had an idea and a colleague has said oh that won't work we've already tried that once and there's just that initial negative reaction well like Carrie said frequent I mean if you aren't committed to it if you haven't bought into it your kids aren't going to buy into it either and so yeah like let's make the best of the scenarios that are in front of us and so hopefully this tool can help you. And in addition to helping you think about addressing problems, if you're doing um, project-based learning, if you're doing any sort of genius hour projects with your students, this is a perfect tool and resource to also use with your students as they are solving problems in their community. And I'll use that as a little transition to our next tool to help support you in this time of opportunity, PBL on the go. I don't know how to put my face again. <laughs> I'll just be here in the expanse. Anyways, um, yeah, so PBL on the go, uh, it's pblonthego.com. Um, it's a new tool. I can't take myself seriously like this. It's just teeth in the sky. Um, anyways, uh, so uh, it's a new tool. I don't know if anyone is familiar with um, OpenIDO. If you are, then this makes it really easy to explain, but it's basically a way, it's an online collaboration tool. So it's basically a way to do a design challenge, a brainstorming session, um, PBL online. Um, so what it is, is over the course of a few days, uh, you can take your students through a challenge. So um, some example ones that have been done is like, how can we use art for good? Um, how can we reduce our, um, our plastic consumption? Uh, how can we, um, I, we actually had one on how can we reinvent the moments our students might miss due to COVID? Um, and it provides a way for people to, it's self-paced, but in a 24 hour period, you can actually set the, the amount of days. Um, for each phase, people get to build off each other and co-create solutions. So in the first day, um, people are brainstorm. This is usually where teachers kind of apply content and, and, and students or participants are able to demonstrate what they know. Um, in the next day, uh, people are able to um, brainstorm what could be. Um, and this is where you can really say, okay, we, we've applied our knowledge. What could we do about it? Uh, the following day, the third day is when you can pitch a solution. And this is where, you know, a student could say what they want to do. Um, and then uh, everyone else is able to give feedback on it based on like how realistic it is, how much, how much impact they think it's going to have, etc. Um, on the fourth day, you have a planning day, and that's kind of where you can pro provide a help desk, but students can gather in teams and decide which project they want to work on, or they can do it themselves, um, and they get that time to actually just do it. And then on the fifth day, they upload whatever their solution was, and um, and everyone shares and it's kind of like an online gallery walk. So um, this is coming out uh, in January. So we're kind of putting it now because we are happy to have uh, teachers that want to try it out, um, test it with their students. And it's really a unique learning experience that is hands-on and can build skills 
while students are, you know, learning content. Um, the reason I kind of jumped on board with it is because there's nothing like it. And I genuinely believe in hands-on learning and project-based learning. Uh, it was always my favorite. I mean, it's still my favorite as a learner. <laughs> and uh, it was always my favorite to do with students. And I noticed it's been really, really hard uh, to do this with COVID right now. It really feels like it's very... Um, sit and get and I know a lot of that's because of the you know what teachers are kind of told they need to teach and this whole learning um the students are falling behind thing I don't really know what that means I'm assuming it's they're missing out on some curriculum stuff but I, I really I really don't think this needs to be a year where students are falling behind I think um I think uh I honestly I think teachers are doing their best and I think um I think I honestly just don't know what the falling behind thing means. <laughs> and so where can people find if they want to get this when it comes out in January? Like how do people find out more about PBL on the go? So if you go to pblonthego.com, um, right now it's just a newsletter. Uh, you can also just email me. It's if you email info at PBL on the go, um, we can let you know when it's out. And then, yeah, you can get, get a free account and you can sign up to do a design challenge uh, with your students. All right. Well, I should say I got to. And then I'm back. Here you are. <laughs> yeah, it's just the, oh, I think it's because of the yellow. <laughs> it is, I bet. Yeah. Okay. That's got to be. That. Are you back now? I'm back. Okay. Um, so we both alluded to this, um, that through this process of really wanting to help empower teachers to have the mindset to take charge and be in charge of their own professional learning and self-development, uh, we together wrote the Startup Teacher Playbook, and we are so close. This too should be out here in January and available, and it's not your normal professional learning book. This is very interactive. There are a lot of tools and strategies to help you turn your ideas for improving teaching and learning into action. But there are also sections to help you build the skills that all of that innovation needs because teaching is exhausting. I mean, it's exhausting when you're doing the bare minimum to keep your head above water. And then when you're actually expected and wanting to do more, which is kind of the natural mindset of a lot of teachers, it is so overwhelming. And as Michelle already said, like there are so many people who don't have childcare. So they're trying to teach their own kids at home, like handle remote learning, run their own classrooms, remote learning, deal with all of the other stress of everything that's going on. Um, so that takes some self-care as well. And that is part of this book. How do you just take care of yourself so that you can have the stamina and the strength to continue innovating in education when you're seeing these problems and kind of accepting the fact that that won't always be the priority. Like you can't always do this all the time. Um, but there are four, there are five modules in the book, kind of a, an introductory module that lays out our theory of change and why we think that this is necessary and what you'll gain from this whole process. The second module is a step-by-step -step tutorial that walks you through how to use the educator canvas in order to turn your ideas into action. The third step is how to um, tap into your own natural leadership, your own leadership traits as a teacher. Uh, I know for me as an educator, I really felt like I was kind of in the back of the bus, so to speak, in education, because there were all these top-down mandates, there were all of these things that were kind of, it felt like we're driving where I had to go in education. And we would really like teachers to either get to the front of the bus, so you're at least telling the driver directions of where you want to go, if not just getting out of the bus and charting your own path of where you want to go and really seeing yourself as the leader that you are in the classroom. I mean, you are leading and designing the educational journey for all of these kids. So you already are a leader. So there's a whole section on really how to tap into your natural abilities as a leader to get more done as you're innovating. And then the fourth section is about the self-care. And then the fifth section is some additional resources to help you continue to innovate 
um, including some work that Carrie inspired us, some care that Carrie shared with us, some in the impact logs so that you could potentially get credit for this work because that is something that we both feel very strongly about that as a teacher, as you are designing solutions to challenges, you should be earning professional development, recertification credit, whatever they're called in your area, that should be part of this process. So we try to provide a rationale as well as some tools that would allow you to get credit for doing the innovation that we hope this book helps you accomplish. So that's the startup teacher in a nutshell. And I'm sure I'm forgetting 5,000 things. So Michelle, tag in here and like flesh out what I have forgotten. Um, yeah, I would just say, uh, we both got really sick of kind of like theory books, like we need to innovate in education. Um, so we actually really, really, it's really applied. Like everything is really an activity or a question for you to think through. It's very little of us telling you more of what needs to happen. We all know what needs to happen. It's, it's how do we do it, right? Um, so each of these modules really tap into this entrepreneurial mindset in startup world. And just to give you kind of like the segue on how each of them do it, um, the canvas is simply like, yeah, run your own workshop. Like we saw these business model canvas workshops, run an educator canvas workshop where teachers just use it and collaborate and problem solve at the end. Um, section three with the leadership. Um, so section two, the canvas, as you saw, it's a project management tool, right? So um, that's the tangible part of making a project happen. Uh, leadership is the intangible part. So leadership training is all about building relationships. So in the business world, when you go to transformational leadership, they're, they want to teach you how to work better with people because when people like you and they know what they're doing and you value, for example, your employees, you get better results. Um, so in teacher, in education, which is a, an industry based on relationships, I have constantly, as is Darcy, been blown away with how little opportunities we have to actually develop ourselves and how we build, how we work with people, right? Our soft skills, our emotional intelligence. So we stole um transformational leadership from the business world and we're like okay what would these same activities look like for teachers and we adapted them um, and then the same thing goes for the self-care thing what happens when you do a startup and you're innovating and problem solving well you get burnt out how do you recharge we stole um, everything that you know we're kind of learning about in the startup world and we're like okay cool let's do the same stuff how can we help teachers recharge with these same kind of activities so really want to emphasize this is really really applied and it's just adapting something we learned from another industry and we're applying it to education because one thing Darcy and I were both scared of it we're like we really hope teachers know that we're not mentioning business or the startup world for like money stuff like it's really just taking this idea which is all the entrepreneurial mindset is, is how do you turn a problem into a possibility? Like what's, what's, a, what's a structure? What are the tools? What are the activities that you can do so that you can actually, you know, reinvent and innovate and do these things. So um, yeah, just want to emphasize, this is really not another book telling you how we need to innovate. It's really about helping you to discover how you can do stuff and giving you strategies to do so. And on that note, I guess I'll throw this out maybe as a closing here and throw it back to Nikki and Carrie. Um, but I hope that as an educator, you do feel like you're in the driver's seat, that you don't feel like I felt for so many years that I was just kind of riding the bus and I was there, but there were so few things that I could control that I just kind of had to go in the direction that I was being told or, you know, using the tools that I was told to use, using the curriculum I was told to use. And sometimes you can't change some of those things. Like Michelle said, you have to know what you can control and change, but you are in the driver's seat of your classroom. And so where do you want to take your classroom and where do you want to take your students? And part of me feels like that's a cheesy question, but I'm also truly sincere in that I think that the evolution and the revolution in education is going to happen because of teachers and because of the amazing things that teachers can and do do every single day. And it is through teachers continuing to innovate in their classroom that education is going to get better and better and we're going to truly serve and reach every single student. So where do you wanna go? 
I was going to say too, everyone just understood now how hard our job is as they witnessed firsthand <laughs> what it's like. And they only had one or two kids. So um, yeah, I say we take the opportunity now when everyone realizes just how much effort it takes to really do this job <laughs> that uh, yeah, we, we have a lot we can offer and do. So um, anyways, uh, I, I don't know, Nikki and Carrie, if you had questions, but if not, I really appreciate you guys letting us on here. So thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to both of you for sharing this with us. And I can't wait to get my hands on the book. Um, I, I love the idea of, you know, taking PD we have to go to and making it more meaningful with you know, some structure. And so I don't know how many times I've been to a conference and didn't feel like I had the time or the space to actually apply what I had learned into my classroom setting. And so um, taking this graphic organizer with you to your next conference, whether it's virtual or in person, is just a great strategy. Um, or administrators um, handing it out at the beginning of a semester and asking teachers to work on it over the course of time. I think as we head into the new year and everybody's always ready to set goals for the new year <laughs> and uh, start, 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 start fresh. Like this was the time of year when I used to like put the blue paper on my bulletin boards and tack up the pictures of penguins. And we start to talk about winter and you know, things like that. Um, like, how do you, how do we make that better? <laughs> you know, I think that was <laughs> How do I make that more interesting and that so repetitive, you know? Um, so thanks to both of you so much for sharing this. And um, I don't know, Carrie, did you want to add anything? Or Deanna, did you have any questions for our presenters? Yeah, I just, I, I, I love your graphic organizer. And I wondered if, what's your thinking of the two of you, I, I see so many possibilities to use this not only as a teacher in PD, but as a collaborative team, grade level, and then on into your classroom when it were appropriate. Is there a reflection piece for uh, all of those um, to gather after you've gone through the steps and you've maybe done a problem based learning? Uh, we created an impact log more as the reflection. So once someone has filled this out, what we would hope is they implement and if they fill out that reflection log, um, they can say, okay, what happened with this? And in the book, we also get into that too, where, you know, when you write about your goals, um, one thing we suggest is like, okay, when is, when do you stop? Like, when do you reflect? And then how do you move forward on it? And from there, we kind of focus on these, these usually you have four categories, like it either worked um, and now what? Do you do it again? Do you spread it? Meaning like you share it with more people? Do you scale it? Do you try to, you know, take it to the next level? Um, do you just, do you get rid of it? You know, did it not work at all and you scrap it? Or is it something where you reflected on and it's like, you know what, just needs a few tweaks. So um, we put some of those uh, steps kind of in the book as a like, a, okay, what's next, if you will, when you do these projects. Um, but really uh, like for a proper reflection piece, we stole Carrie's impact log so that um, teachers would have the opportunity if they did this kind of work and wanted to get credit for it, that they could have these discussions and engage on like, okay, what did you learn from this experience? Um, and, and, and how the project went and, you know, how did your students react, parents, et cetera, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I just see so many possibilities. I can't wait to get the book as well. Thank you, ladies. Oh, thank I love the, the idea of um, suggesting this to teams of teachers a book and having them do it as like a as their you know as their professional learning um throughout the year I know that like I worked with my grade level team as a teacher and I could have seen us really reading the book together and then working through the um not just the canvas but all of those you know things as you were talking about in the startup teacher book um kind of doing a book study but since this is a more of an active book than also doing the things in the book, right? Um, that are recommended. And I think that that could be a really valuable tool for teachers as well. So I'm excited for it to, Yay. to come out. Also because I like know you guys. So I'm totally <laughs> gonna have a book in my bookshelf from people that I know. Like I can be like, hey guys, I know these people. Um, so I feel kind of a little bit like I can ride on your coattails in that regard. So <laughs> Absolutely. 
excited about well, that. Well, your reference, like we said, your impact log is referenced and just right there in the book. So it's, you have helped support all of the coattails. No, that was not, you guys did the work, but <laughs> thank you guys so much for doing this. I'm excited. I think this is a really good time of year for this discussion as well, because I know that like for me personally, as a teacher, Christmas break was always sort of my like reflection, recharge, set new goals, kind of gear up, you know, for the rest of the school year and really kind of think about what I was doing and what I could do differently and how I could keep my kids motivated. And that was a really, I did a lot of that over Christmas break. And so, um, this is a good time of year for that. I think, especially for elementary teachers who have the same students and now we're all starting to get a little burnt out and tired of each other and, you know, just really needing to sort of figure out how to get it to the next level. So I think that, um, I'm excited that we did this right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, thanks for joining us for Tech Talks Tuesday. And we'll see you next month. I'm going to stop the recording.